Look at all those chickens. So the bees are doing quite well. It's been two and a half weeks or so since I've cracked this hive open. I just wanted to confirm the queen was there and that she was laying nice pattern brood. And there was about an, a four inch by eight inch capped cell, so about 40 square inches of capped cells and then quite a variety of, of uh, eggs and larvae and whatnot. So she's doing really, really well. I've decided to leave them alone till about February or so. This gives them the opportunity to seal up any, any cracks, any air leaks or anything that they may get in there. They're getting ready for winter. You can see they're still pretty active for being early in November. It is about 63 degrees out right now with no breeze or very, very minor breeze. But they're working. They have no mites. Um, yeah, they're ready for the winter. The hive on the left is still the sealed off hive. We still have nine frames full of honey and pollen. And um, I'm going to save those. I'm not harvesting anything this year. So my plan is to take those frames and throw them in the freezer before I reintroduce them into a new hive next year. I don't want to transfer any bacteria or any bugs or anything that may be in there from this year to the next. But I'm going to leave them in that box for right now just because I haven't gotten around to pulling them out of there. They're not hurting anybody, but the bees are looking good. They're hanging out just fine. That makes me very happy. So the garden this year did fantastic. I know I didn't do probably any videos, one or two maybe of the garden. But um, here we are in November, as I mentioned before, and just yesterday I harvested a little basket full of strawberries, snow peas, um, string beans, and the last few apples I had on my trees. My trees are now pretty much barren. As soon as they drop their leaves, I'm going to prune them back. Yeah. Dog. Dog. <laughs> I bless you. <laughs> oh, you just sneezed on my face, bitch. So it's been about a month, a uh, month since his diagnosis. And uh, if you didn't know he was sick, you wouldn't know that he was sick. His attitude is awesome. He's a little slim. He's about, last night he was 63.4 pounds, which is a few pounds off, but uh, it's quite possible he just had a big poop. Because I know I lose about three pounds after a big giant dump. So um, he fluctuates a pound or two in either direction. I stop weighing him every day. I weighed him every day for about two weeks just to get a kind of a baseline of what we were dealing with and fluctuations. Now I just do it once a week. Uh, so he's doing well, I guess. I don't know. He's eating. The, uh, whatever the alternative stuff I'm treating him, whatever that's doing, it's definitely keeping his appetite up and keeping him in good spirits. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. We do good, dog. What? I know he wants to go for a walk. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go for a walk. I'm gonna do it. go for a walk? Who wants to go for a walk? He does. He does. Uh, uh, stop, stop, stop. You're gonna hurt yourself. He heard the W word, so we'll be right back. I'll continue this video in just a minute after our walk. Walk. <laughs> hey, buddy. He went to go for a walk. Okay, go for a walk. Go for a walk. <laughs> you're an idiot, but you're my idiot. Yeah, yeah, go for a walk. Okay, let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk. You gonna fall for it again? <laughs> we'll be right back. So the Salmo remains uh, very little progress over the last few weeks. I've made several work trips up to El Rancho to get it ready for the winter. So this is kind of taking a back seat. As you can see, I did get the fan mounted. It's nice and solid. That's an auxiliary cooling fan out of a Toyota 4Runner. And um, it's tested and moves a ton of air. I will do some degree of shrouding that's going to come around and um, just better focus the air over the cylinders. So that auxiliary cooling fan only draws about 7 amp, actually it's 6.85 amps. And I do have the capability of running a second one. I do have another one around here somewhere, I just have to dig it up. This, has, this bike has a 20 amp main fuse. I'm assuming that the stator could somehow probably handle 15 amp and still be able to put a charge into the battery. I don't know, I'm going to see. I'm going to try it with this one, I'm going to shroud it, I'm going to see how much air it moves. If I need to add a second fan down the road, I will find that out when I do some field testing. And uh, basically I'm going to put the biggest fan system on here that I can and still be able to have charge to the battery. 
and yeah it should be good and I did get the the engine and f or the frame I should say because it is attached to the frame it's all permanently welded to the uh, cutting trolley here so everything's welded ready to go and hopefully in the next week or so I'll get back on this project work's been steady but it's been very manageable the last couple months I've been um, like I said I'm kinda changing the way I'm doing things the way I do business so yeah so I've just uh, I just kinda made that decision that things needed to change and change for the better I hope change for the better I'll let you know in the spring I plan to stay in this work pattern mode for uh, at least the next six months and then I'm gonna reevaluate my situation uh, after six months it's uh, whatever we'll get it sorted out or we won't been working on the play if you guys are new to my channel you may not know that for the last six years I've been uh, the technical director for my now second child's high school um, they both went to the same school it's just kind of continuing she's got another year there after this year and then I can put that funsies behind me but for now I'm still tech director I'm still building sets I'm still teaching the kids theatrical design and set construction. We have a load of fun. One of the props I built uh, with my new welding helmet, and I did get a new welding helmet, and it's awesome, and I'm going to get you guys a review video here. I don't think that you've probably seen it yet. You, you may not have seen the review video yet. Um, I, I did it yesterday, but I built a, um, I did build my first TIG welding project with my pretty Jackson Halo um, welding helmet. Basically, what we need to do is we need to drop a prop from the fly space, which is the space above the theater. And I built this on a piece of channel. I used channel so it could contour to the pipe that we're gonna strap this to. And you're gonna hang, the prop is gonna hang right here. I've welded a, a nut onto the end of a rod that a student, tech student, we're gonna run that across the pipe down below to the wings. And you pull it and the prop falls every time. Simple and easy project. Uh, and it's really only supporting just a few ounces of weight. It's not a heavy prop, but it's awesome. You know, I came to this realization on Friday night, Halloween night, by the end of the evening, that I had just crossed through a milestone, uh, a parenting milestone, in that for the first time in 19 years, I don't have a big bag of random candy that I can take stuff from. Um, for 19 years when my kids came back with their haul, everything would get laid out on the living room floor and we'd sort through any sketchy candies would be deleted. I got everything. Snickers, Milk Duds. Snickers and Milk Duds were a given. The kids just didn't get those. And then anything else I didn't like. They weren't a big fan of the Twizzlers. So they, they, didn't, they don't like licorice for some reason, but I, I like red licorice. Hell, I even like black licorice. If that makes me a freak, then so be it. But, uh, yeah, this is the first Halloween in 19 years that I, I didn't have uh, their candy. They're, they're too old for that now. They're, they're too old and too cool. <sighs> Crazy 45 cat. Check this out. Dude. So I've been, I've been working away on your cannon wood project, and I and I'm, was getting 80%, 75%, 80% of the way there, and I'm not really happy with how it's coming out. So I went back and I watched your video, the last two videos you had of that cannon. The first one when the cannon was all complete, and then the video you made when you took the cannon apart. And I, I built it all out of oak. It's all out of real nice oak. And this is that, that, that strip that fits underneath the axle arm. And you said in your video that it was too thin. You felt it was too thin. And likely it's just because the wood had aged and it collapsed. So I'm giving you two options on that. I've given you one piece of wood here that's a six, uh, not a sixteenth. It's a thirty-second of an inch thicker than this very much different and then I'll give you one that's about a sixteenth of an inch it might even be uh, like three thirty seconds thicker than this one but I'll, I'll give you both and you can try both and if for some reason this one's too thin but this one's a little too thick you can just run this on a on a sander look at everything's got, it's got dust everywhere uh, you can just run this on a sander if you have a, a, a palm sander or something and thin it out but I'm going to give you two two thickness so you th thickness, th thickness so you can figure that out uh, the the side pieces, honestly, and this is just probably me because I'm I'm like screwed up perfectionist. I've book matched two side pieces, right? These things are are just they're they're dead nuts exactly the same. Uh, sanded, finished. The thickness is identical to these thicknesses. I had to run them through a. Uh, I, did, I don't have a planer here. I have a planer up at the ranch. 
but I've got a nice big belt sander and I ran them to the thickness so the thickness is the same. Now here's what I noticed when I was watching your videos Jerry is that you've got a bronze band or something that goes around here and these pieces look like they're fit into that bronze band and both of these pieces are different. They're, they're not the same and these are not book matched. Obviously this, this was a hand done job. Here's what I'm going to do Jerry and I, I wanted to get this off to you back to you in the next couple days but I'm, I'm going to keep it for a few more days. Tomorrow's Monday. Um, I'm going to get some more oak because I, I have more oak in inventory just not here at the house. But I'm going to give you these that I've already made and these may work perfect. These two may fit perfectly in those those bronze wraps that are made for these uh, but they may not and I'd hate to get them all the way out to you and have them be too small or something's not right. So I'm going to rough cut two more of these and I'm going to make them about a sixteenth of an inch just kind of just rough cut them. I won't finish sand them so in case you have to fit them in there and you really want a nice snug fit I'll get the thickness identical to here so you don't have to worry about that part but with a, again with a simple palm sander you can shape it if you really want to get crazy or if these fit nice you can just pop these in. So I'm going to give you both options. Use the two that you want and the other two you can you can keep as inventory. Sorry, I know this should be in a separate video. Jerry, do you want me to drill the holes in these to try to match these holes? Or do you want to wait until you have everything together with all the pieces and you drill the holes yourself? If you have a drill press or you have a good steady hand with your drill, I personally, I would recommend that you do it because then you have all the stuff there to fit it to make sure everything fits right. But if, if you don't have a drill press or you don't want to drill it, I'll do my best to copy the existing holes in these old pieces. But sometimes the old pieces shrink and, they, and they're not they don't line up as well as they used to. Last but not least here, so I, I've got to dish this out. I know this is where the barrel of that cannon sits and then it tapers as well. You see it tapers towards this rotten piece. Now I have, according to your template, I have this, right? And this is your, is that. And then I gave you plenty of tail here. This is what rests on the floor. And if you need to, you can, you're going to be able to shave this. Now there, there are Different schools of thought whether you use a solid piece of oak versus a glued piece of oak. And in my opinion and in my experience with using wood that can be used under stress applications such as your black, uh, black powder cannon, this is stronger than a piece of solid oak. If you look at the failure of this, now granted this is an old piece of wood that sat out in the weather. If you get a, a grain, a, a crack along a grain, it's going to go all the way through the piece of wood to the other side versus a bonded piece of wood like this where we have four one inch pieces of wood, oak, that have been bonded together. And I just rough cut them. I rough cut them on the bandsaw and then uh, I sanded them to clean them off and I use a tight bond exterior glue, clamped them all together and now this is as strong if not, well it would be stronger than a solid piece of oak. So that's it. Listen, I thank you guys for hanging out for this update video. Uh, as always, I've got a hundred different things going on. But as, as good as it can get is I'm not losing my mind, which is good. And I still, have, um, I still have a few items in the hoard I need to sell. But for the most part, I'm about 90% thinned out on my hoard. I have two big projects that I just need to get off my butt and drag them out and take pictures um, to clear some space on my hoard. And I have two more cars here in the city house that I need to get on the market and get out of my life. Just because, I mean, really, who needs... Who needs six cars? Uh, yeah. And I may be buying another one. <laughs> so I appreciate you guys watching, sticking with me. Um, I hope to, to wind this year down pretty calmly and not too crazy. This boiler project is, is definitely my last big project for this year. And that'll be nice to see that one in my rear view mirror. And um, just saying, just saying. I'm going to do a recap video on the boiler so I won't get into it too much here. Appreciate you guys watching. Got to run. See ya.